where the light begins. Perhaps it does not begin. Perhaps it is always. Perhaps it takes a lifetime to open our eyes to learn to see what has forever shimmered in front of us. The luminous line of the map in the dark, the vigil flame in the house of the heart, the love so searing we cannot keep from singing, from crying out in testimony and in praise. Perhaps this is the day will be the mountain over which the dawn breaks. Perhaps we will turn our face toward it, toward what has been always. Perhaps our eyes will finally open in ancient recognition, willingly dazzled, illuminated at last. Perhaps this is the day the light begins in us. Our opening carol this morning, the second Sunday after Christmas, is number 35. It's printed in your online bulletin. Good Christian friends, rejoice. As you are able, wherever you find yourself, let us join together in our call to worship for the second Sunday after Christmas. Here on the heels of Christmas, we speak of love, we speak of joy, we speak of candlelight and fireside, we speak of dreams being fulfilled, we speak of glorias and angel choruses, we speak the words, do not be afraid. Here on the heels of Christmas, we are called to speak. For the world needs a light. A light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us worship and listen. Then let us speak. Amen. And dear friends, wherever you are joining us from today, and whenever you are joining us, whether here on Sunday morning or in the days and weeks to come. May you be welcome in this space that we create together by being with one another wherever we find ourselves. We are broadcasting live this morning from the sanctuary of Knox Metropolitan United Church, an affirming ministry, in the heart of Treaty 4 territory, the land, homeland of the Métis Mitchiff Nation. And thank you for joining us wherever you are coming from. We are online only this week and next 
January 9th. And throughout that time, our reopening committee and the Knox Metropolitan United Church Board will be monitoring the situation in our communities and will be looking at plans for the rest of January and beyond. So please stay tuned for ongoing announcements about how we will be offering our worship in the coming weeks. Thanks to Hart Godden, to Carol, to Liz and to Vonda who are here helping us with the service in various ways this morning. Uh, this week again, there will be no online greeting or Zoom coffee time and Dan, our online greeter and coffee time host, enjoys a well-earned post-Christmas break. Both of those things will return next week, as will our Friday e-announcements. So please look for all of those things. One announcement to mention, Saturday bagged lunches and hot coffee being offered by a bunch of churches within the downtown core being offered from First Baptist Church across the street from us will be happening again on Saturday, January the 8th. And the intention is for that to happen weekly until the end of March at least. Organizers of that as well are monitoring the public health situation and preparing to adjust plans as needed, if needed, but in such a way that continues to offer something of warmth and nourishment to those who seek that help on Saturday mornings, sorry, Saturday early afternoons. If you're interested in being involved in this, please do let us know. As we continue along in our worship, we share together a prayer of centering and confession. God of today and tomorrow, we know that divine fingerprints are all over this world, and we know that those who dream cannot keep silent. So today we pray. Give us eyes to see, give us courage to trust, and give us lips to speak of the divine in our midst. Gratefully, we pray. Dear friends, wherever you are, whatever is facing you, whatever you are going through, whatever you are celebrating or holding in challenge this day. May the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. Our hymn is found in your online bulletin number 69, Away in a Manger.
our prayer for understanding. Still unfolding one, on the cusp of a new year, we wonder about intentions to set for our collective rest and well-being. We celebrate the love and connection that has sustained us. We mourn the losses we've collected and how they can stagnate in our bodies. Move with us in the dance of delight and sorrow of this transitional time and bless our willful hopes. As we open ourselves to ancient words, may wisdom spring forth in our collective pondering. A reading from the ancient Jewish writings from the book of Sirach. Wisdom praises herself and tells of her glory in the midst of her people. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth, and in the presence of his hosts, she tells of her glory. I came forth from the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth like a mist. I dwelt in the highest heavens and my throne was in a pillar of cloud. Alone I compassed the vault of heavens and traversed the deep depths of the abyss. Over waves of the sea, over all the earth, over every people and nation, I have held sway. Among these things I sought a resting place. In whose territory? Should I abide? Then the creator of all things gave me a command, and my creator chose the place for my tent. He said, Make your dwelling in Jacob, and in Israel receive your inheritance. Before the ages, in the beginning, he created me, and for all the ages I shall not cease to be. In the holy tent I ministered before him, and so I was established in Zion. Thus, in the beloved city, he gave me a resting place, and in Jerusalem was my domain. I took root in an honored people, in the portion of the Lord, his heritage. A responsive reading, Wisdom 10 found in pages um, 893 in Voices United, but it's in the bulletin too. rescued a holy people, a blameless race, from a nation of oppressors. She inspired a servant of God, who with signs and wonders defied formidable rulers. She rewarded the labors of the holy people and guided them on the marvelous journey. She became a shelter for them by day and a blaze of stars by night. Wisdom brought the people over the Red Sea, guided them through its deep waters. But their enemies she engulfed, then cast them up again from the fathomless deep. So the just plundered the ungodly. They sang the glories of your holy name, O God, and praised with one accord your power, their champion. For wisdom taught the mute to speak, and made the tongues of infants eloquent.
from the Christian scriptures, from the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through the Word, and without the Word not one thing came into being. What has come into being in the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, and so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to them become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen this glory, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to God's own heart who has made God known. May God's blessings be upon these and all words spoken and pondered here today. Amen. A Blessing for a New Beginning by John O'Donohue. In the out-of-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight when your courage kindled and you stepped out onto new ground, your eyes young again, with energy and dream, a path of plentitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk 
Soon you will be home in a new rhythm, for your soul senses the world that awaits you. One of the things that appeals to me about O'Donohue's words here and elsewhere is how newness is framed, not as reinvention, but something more akin to homecoming. There's a, a gentleness in that sort of energy. There's a, a trusting, a consenting to a persistent energy of the self forming and emerging, and a commitment to the spiritual work of discerning and responding. In the introduction to the Book of Blessings, to bless the space between us, which includes this one I've just read, John O'Donohue reflects on the idea of a threshold or of liminality. To change is one of the great dreams of every heart. To change the limitations, the sameness, the banality, or the pain. So often we look back on the patterns of behavior, the kind of decisions we make repeatedly, and that have failed to serve us well, and we aim for a new path of living. But change can be difficult. So often we opt to continue old patterns rather than risking the danger of difference. We are also often surprised by change that seems to arrive out of nowhere. A threshold is not a simple boundary. It is a frontier that divides two different territories, rhythms and atmospheres. Indeed, it is a lovely testimony to the fullness an integrity of an experience or stage of life that it intensifies towards the end into a real frontier that cannot be crossed without the heart being passionately engaged and woken up. At this threshold, a great complexity of emotions comes alive. Confusion, fear, excitement, sadness, hope. This is one of the reasons such vital crossings were always clothed with ritual. It is wise in your own life to be able to recognize and acknowledge the key thresholds, to take your time, to feel all the varieties of presence that accrue there, to listen inward with complete attention until you hear the inner voice calling you forward. The time has come to cross. I like this idea of newness, calling across a threshold of possibility, speaking with intention into and from the human heart, revealing what is possible, sketching out potential. This is to me what our readings signify what they point towards. These invitations to step across personal and communal threshold, wherein we are able to name patterns that, to use O'Donohue's language, have failed to serve us well. How, though, I wonder, might we create the space for the sort of inward listening about which O'Donohue writes, that inward listening that allows us to hear the inner voice calling us forward. Our readings today mingle the terms word and wisdom. They offer an imagining of the divine as voice, as call, as beckoning, and they invite us to adopt a posture of response. A posture of response is an interesting sort of energy. And what's lovely in O'Donohue's words is that gentle reminder that response is not always a simple thing. 
These words speak into patterns and realities of patterned responses. Yet both our texts point to a presence in, in the cosmos, in human history, and in the self of a transcendence that is accessible, that calls to the human heart, calls to human community, that beckons to be recognized, beckons to be received, to be integrated. And there's a dynamic motion there rather than a static stratification, as if the holy, as if the divine were less a destination and more a companion on the journey. This morning is the second Sunday after Christmas. It's a moment, if you will, of liturgical liminality. It's no longer Christmas, no longer Advent, but not yet epiphany, not yet into the rhythm of the new. I wonder if you sense in yourself something of a liminality, a sense of no longer that is yet mingled with the not yet. May these texts remind us that ours is a tradition that legitimizes liminality that which is no longer, that which is not yet. And that these two do not preclude home, wholeness. They remind us that divine presence is neither destination nor achievement, holds us in in-between spaces, in that which is ever emerging, that which is coming into being, that which is ever opening, the heart. That is, I believe, what it means to speak of grace. That wellness, that wholeness, that holds us when things are not quite as they were and not yet what they might become. We'll end where we began with John O'Donohue's blessing for new beginnings. And I wonder if there is a line, a phrase, a word that captures for you where you find yourself. Perhaps it is one of liminality, one of longing, one of a restlessness, perhaps even a divine dissatisfaction. in the out-of-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander. This beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you are ready to emerge. For a long time it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whisper. Heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent and wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight, when courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plentitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure, hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm. For your soul senses the world that awaits you. As we are able, may we respond with the words of a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. 
who is come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, and life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Our carol is found in your online bulletin. Number 50, He is Born. We witness to holy mystery, that is, holy love. God is creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in God. Our first response to God's providence is gratitude. We sing thanksgiving, offerings that support the ministry of Knox Metropolitan United Church and the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada can be made through the United Church PAR program, through Canada Helps, through e-transfer, or through an envelope stamped or mailed or dropped off at the office. Gifts look like volunteering, helping, sharing what you find significant, and holding one another in gracious, loving, compassionate community. So for gifts in every form, we pray. We live abundant lives. 
blessed with so much. We offer what we can for God's dreams, including those lived out through this church. Bountiful God, accept these are seeds of hope for the healing of the world. May the harvest be plentiful. O oh God, we pray. Amen. In our prayers, we begin with silence, a chance to come home within our own selves, to our breath, to our bodies, and from that space to name that which weighs heavily, that which brings us joy. In silence, we bring to mind our prayers for self, for the people we love, for the communities we are a part of, for the world we all share. In silence, let us pray. for new things that are exciting, hopeful, and full of possibility. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For new things that we feel pulled into rather than invited into, for new things that feel hard, burdensome, that which we wish we were not taking on. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For spaces where we feel stuck in repeated patterns, repeated patterns within ourselves, within relationships, repeated patterns within community, repeated patterns within society, for places where we feel stuck, going over the same ground again and again, seeing perhaps neither forward motion or sometimes feeling like we're moving backwards. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whatever prayers we bring with us this day, we bring them together with words Jesus taught friends and followers both. For as a child turns to her mother, so we turn to God and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come to a close, our thanks again to you who have joined us wherever you have come from, whenever you are watching. We pray this time was a blessing to you as you are a blessing to the creation of this space and the space that we bless between us. Thanks to those in this place who helped us this morning. A reminder that our Zoom coffee time resumes on January the 9th. And a reminder that if you are interested in joining with others from downtown churches and offering bagged lunches, hot coffee, and a place to warm up, next Saturday, January the 8th, from First Baptist Church, to let us know. And we can help connect you with the organizers of that event. As we go, our closing carol 
is number 76. See Amid the Winter Snow. go from here, whatever going looks like for us, whatever we go into, may the God of new beginnings bless the wisdom of your inner child. May the God of endings honor all that has been lost. May the God of all that is still becoming guide you along your way.